Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna explain how to test and diagnose the evaporator temperature sensor on aircon. I'm gonna show you guys the location of the sensor. Uh, we will have a look at the wind diagram, how to check the wiring, how to remove the sensor, and how to inspect the sensor itself. But before starting to do the diagnostic, if you guys haven't subscribed the channel, please make sure you subscribe the channel for supporting us and for receiving the notification when we upload new videos. All right, first of all, let's have a look at the sensor location. I'm just looking under the dash. And this is the evaporator temperature sensor. Just look at it, just look at it just right here. So I can remove the sensor to check it out. And as you see, I have two wires on the sensor. Let's have a look at the wiring first before starting to remove the sensor and checking the wiring. Then we will get back here to check the wiring first and I'm gonna remove the sensor to check it out as well. Here is the sensor wiring. As you see, this is the evaporator temperature sensor. It does have two wires. Both of them are connected to the AC control module. And here is the positive side. The other one is the negative side. As you guys may know, this sensor is actually a negative type thermistor. So internal resistance of the sensor change inversely according to the temperature. It means when temperature goes higher, the internal resistance should drop so ac control module uses the information from this sensor to monitor the temperature of the evaporator so if temperature goes very low ac control module interrupt the ac compressor operation to make sure this temperature goes back to normal so sometimes when you check the live data of this sensor in the scan tool if you see the temperature is set at minus two degrees it means the sensor is faulty and that's exactly the fail safe mode of the sensor of course because this sensor is ntc sensor we should be able to check the internal resistance so i'm going to remove the sensor to perform the internal resistance measurement but on the wiring itself i should be able to measure the voltage on the positive side of the sensor and according to the workshop manual i should expect five volts when ignition switches on so first of all let's go for checking this voltage because by checking this voltage we are actually making sure this wiring is okay and then we're going to remove the sensor uh, to make sure internal resistance of the sensor is okay as well. So I have disconnected the connector from the sensor. As you see, I have two wires. That blue wire is actually the positive side. So I'm gonna back prop that one. Okay. So I'm gonna check the voltage over here. And as you see, we are getting almost five volts. This is exactly what workshop manual tells us. So I'm going to put the sensor connector back to see what would be the voltage when sensor is connected. All right, sensor connector is connected. Then I'm going to measure the voltage right now. Again, as you see, the voltage drops to 1.88 because sensor is actually measuring the temperature and internal resistance is affecting the voltage. All right, so this is exactly the good measurement. Let's remove the sensor and check the internal resistance on it as well. And then for the sensor itself, just rotate it 90 degrees and take the sensor out. So this is the evaporator temperature sensor. So right now we're going to check the sensor itself to make sure if the sensor is okay or not. As you see the specification right now on the screen, this is what workshop manual tells us regarding the sensor internal resistance based on different range of temperature. So right now we are checking this one at normal ambient temperature which is something around 20 degrees so i'm gonna select resistance on multimeter and then i need to measure the resistance across these two pins on the sensor itself so as you see we are getting 4.9 kilo which is exactly what workshop manual tells us based on this temperature so this confirms that the sensor is okay and if you are measuring the sensor resistance and you are measuring something way different of course you have to replace the sensor with a brand new one all right guys thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video please don't forget to visit the channel page for more diagnostic videos